Welcome back to NWA Universe Mode, and we are kicking off tonight's show with a pretty big match. In fact, tonight's match card in general is quite stacked. But we've got AJ Styles, who came pretty close to uh, beating the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Will Ospreay in his debut. Uh, he was moments away possibly from winning and Regal agrees that he doesn't believe we've seen the last of those two battling it out, but it's got to be done the right way. AJ Styles has got to become number one contender, so William Regal has set up a number one contenders match here tonight. Styles really was pushed to his limit last week going up against Osprey. And tonight could be quite similar because he's going to be going up against the national champion, the majestic pheasant himself, Chris Jericho. And look in the background, there's Omos, newest member of the Jericho Appreciation Society after Jericho managed to recruit Omos. Almost turned on uh, Austin Fury. No news just yet on the uh, condition of Austin Fury. It's being kept quite hush hush because we're just uncertain at the moment the damage that was done on NWA USA. Jericho seems quite proud of himself for the recruitment of Omos and uh, the destruction and <laughs> and. Uh, downfall of Austin Fury, who had cemented himself in the mid-card division since the start of the season. Oh my god, and Jericho there, managing to avoid Styles' attack. Back suplex early on, literally like the first move that Jericho performs. Gonna be a rough start there for Styles. But we saw Jericho take Fury to the limit anyway. There was already some damage done. We can confirm that there was some damage done in that match between Jericho and Fury. The issue is we're trying to figure out whether or not Fury is in good enough condition to compete, essentially. But this is a number one contenders match. The winner of this match will go on to face Will Ospreay at NWA All Out War. It's going to be the next pay-per-view in uh, this is the second week in the in the four week build up. That's the current schedule that we're going with. We also need to figure out who's going to be taking on FTR. William Regal has yet to actually make a decision in terms of which tag team deserves an opportunity. We may find that out later on tonight and it's being confirmed by William Regal that we're going to be seeing Rhea Ripley going up against Bianca Belair one final time. Oh, Atomic Drop there. Very nice. Atomic Drop... Uh, drop? Atomic... <laughs> atomic Drop uh, Body Splash combo. And Styles making sure to stay away from Jericho there. Jericho snapped German suplex though, ju uh, dumping. Styles on his head. Again, the syllables mixed up here. Oh. Jericho stopping Styles in his path, trying to keep it slow. He knows that if Styles picks up the pace, he's going to be a little bit buggered. Styles went for something, but Jericho managing to catch his ankle there to trip him up. Oh my god, and a jawbreaker. Styles is one step ahead of Jericho. Both men. Pretty equal there, right up until Styles got the upper hand. Went for the Pele, got hit by a Lariat. Oh my god, and a crouching Enziguri there. The basement Enziguri. From Jericho, didn't have to go too far for that. European uppercut. This match is moving quick. Neck breaker there from Styles. Good grief. Styles turning Jericho around, trying to disorientate Chris Jericho. Now in the powerbomb position. Where is he taking him? Uh-oh. <laughs> He's going to the top turnbuckle with him. Avalanche arm drag. Jericho sent across the ring. 
you gotta take age into account when it comes to uh, guys like Jericho. They can pack a punch, but can they take one like they used to? Oh my god, and we see Jericho do that, ex that, that exterior powerbomb quite frequently to his opponents. He did it to Theory. That was one of the reasons Theory's back gave out during that match. Styles has got to make sure that he doesn't get locked in the Lion Tamer. If he gets locked in the Lion Tamer, it could be lights out and Jericho could become a future double champion. We've seen those before with uh, Universe Mode. Oh, both men back to the outside. Styles hit with another clothesline. Jericho targeting the arm now. Attacking the wounded Styles on the mat. Got a this is awesome chant from the crowd and look at Jericho. Jericho like a shark smelling blood in the water as he goes for the wall of the Jericho submission hold. Not deciding to elevate it for the Lion Tamer. Might have made a mistake there. Styles trying to claw his way out of it but he's having to use his lower body strength instead to get out of it. Oh my god, went for something, but Jericho using that low center of gravity to prevent Styles from picking him up. Went for the went for the Judas effect. Oh my god, and a brain buster. Slamming Styles down on his dome. What is Jericho going for now? Could be looking for another submission. And he does the Lion Tamer. Lion Tamer. On Styles, Styles got to try and stay in this thing. Oh my god, and look at Jericho wrenching on the spine of AJ. AJ looks so close to tapping out. Oh my god, and he wriggles through Jericho, getting thrown out of that, that submission hold. Pop up into the Styles Clash position, and he hits it on Jericho. Styles clash to Jericho, but Jericho got the rope. Jericho got the rope. Oh my god. Oh, and a brain buster there from Styles. Styles getting all fired up. This has been a fantastic match so far. Oh, and Styles going to the apron. That's a long way. Long way for a forearm. Oh my god, and Jericho. Managing to sidestep it, but Styles catching him into the calf crusher. Jericho's foot landing on the rope. The ropes have really been helping Jericho. Styles has got to get him away. Oh my god, knee to the midsection again. There's a snap there. Basement drop kick to the side of the skull. Jericho, just like that, getting back into this. The club at the outside of the ring can't help Styles in any way. And now, again, Lion Tamer on Styles. Is Jericho going to advance? Oh my god. And Styles taps. Chris Jericho just became the number one contender for the NWA Championship. He's the national champion. That means he's going to either have to pull double duty. Or, if William Regal is nice enough about it, his belts, the national championship's not going to be on the line at All Out War. So next up we have what is going to be called an advancement match. Uh, this is basically <laughs> a fancy way of saying it's an exhibition match. Uh, there's no real feud or rivalry behind this, it's just to award wins and losses essentially but we've got the the winner of the Crockett Cup men's division and that is Volta and he's going to be going up against three other men in a fatal four-way elimination match and the second man in that match is going to be The recently debuted Ethan Page, who picked up a deserving win over Buddy Murphy. 
in his uh, in his debut, it was a fantastic match. Both men really pushed each other to their limits. But Ethan Page came out on top. Third man in that match is going to be the returning Ricky Starks. We've not really seen Ricky since he lost his Mid-Atlantic Championship. He's taken a little bit of a break and uh, gone around some of the, the independent promotions working some matches. He's expressed interest actually in specifically fighting Ethan Page. Starks has said that he feels like he and Ethan Page are cut from a very similar cloth and whether that means they tag in the future or whether they fight each other in the future he's just interested to see how they gel in the ring and Shane Haste who has been a mainstay in terms of universe mode been around for a few years now former WWE Intercontinental Champion and recently returned as a member of TMDK alongside Jonah also aligning himself with Murphy, so there's a little bit of a grudge there in terms of Shane Haste might want to get his hands on Ethan Page. So here we go, Volta, Ricky Starks, Ethan Page, and Shane Haste. Again, this is going to be elimination, and because it's a fatal four-way, that means no disqualification. If anybody wants to get involved or any kind of weapon decides to uh, be present, become known, then uh, fully legal, fully legal. Cobra Clutch Backbreaker there from Page to Haste. Just launching Haste around the ring as Starks goes after Volta, managing to ground the ring general. Page and Starks sort of somewhat teaming up by coincidence. And uh, we've got two members of factions actually showing up here tonight. We've got Volta as a member of Imperium and Shane Haste as TMDK, uh, the Mighty Don't Kneel, the Australian faction. And uh, Volta has actually expressed saying that he understands William Regal from the business side of things bringing in the club and AJ Styles and the JAS and Jericho. But realistically, there were already factions on the brand. And he believes that Imperium should be given an equal opportunity just, uh, uh, just as the club and the JAS. Uh, Shane Haste, again, member of TMDK. They've been mentioned in the, uh, the current faction wars. It's going to be very interesting to see how they kind of factor into the overall scheme of things. What is Starks going for now? Irish whip into the corner. He's had Volta's number this entire match so far. He's been really hounding on Volta. I mean, find the biggest guy and go after him. Why not? Oh my god, and a second one. Haste just took down Page. Starks just took down Volta. Oh my god, and Volta with the kick out. Oh, and a roll up on Starks. One. And a quick kick out there. Haste now with the black swan off the top. Page is down. Trying to get that revenge on Page. But Page with a kick out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Bomb Valley death from Shane Haste. Oh my god. God, I believe that's what it was. No, I don't. It might not have been. I can't remember. <laughs> There's too many people on the brand. <laughs> oh, too many moves. Whatever it was, he's just done it to Volta and Starks has been busted open by Page. Haste now going back after Page. Hits him with a falcon arrow. Page is laid out. For haste. Black Swan. Page got the knees up. Page got the knees up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Page is finding himself in the middle of both Starks and Haste. And now Haste turning on Starks. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stolen suplex perhaps. No. Look at Starks' face. Look at Starks' face. 
Oh my god! Oh, and a spear! Spear to haste! One! Two! Everyone was just happy to watch! Everyone's trying to get rid of Shane Haste! Oh my god, and Volta gets rid of, uh, of Ethan Page. Oh, kick to the midsection! Way! Oh my god! Oh, and a cutter there! Sh shoulder mounted cutter! I don't know the actual name, oh, but, but Volt is kicking out. <laughs> oh my god. And now Paige is building up for something. Oh my god. Oh, and Volt with a back body drop. Good grief. Volt has just wiped out Paige with that back body drop. Oh, and a power bomb. I think regardless of what happens here tonight, all four of these men should be very, very happy with their performances. This has been a surprisingly good match. I'm not going to lie, I didn't really have like the highest of hopes. Look at Haste and Starks on the outside of the ring. Uh oh, Volta. Volta with Paige. Oh my god. God. Page is down to. Oh, that is it. Page is the first to be eliminated. It took a hell of a lot to put him down. Look at Volta standing tall in the center of the ring, waiting for Ricky Starks and Shane Hayes to make their presence known in the ring. He's the ring general, he owns that canvas right now. And he's waiting for whoever wins this 1v1 on the outside to enter his ring. And Shane Haste throwing in. Oh my god, throwing in Ricky Starks. Sort of throwing him to the wolves. Or more like a grizzly bear. Holy shit, Volta does not look very happy with either of these men. Oh my god. Pummeling Haste in the corner. Went for the big boot. Oh, and Haste with the leaping lariat takes down Volta. Volta's now down on the outside. He's managed to knock him outside of the ring. Haste and Starks getting the ring to themselves right now. Oh, the Murph knee. Paying homage to Murphy. Haste with a knee to the face of Starks, and again, Starks is busted wide open right now. Oh, the Black Swan to the back of Starks! Oh my god! Starks just been wiped out by that Black Swan! And now, Volta straight into a Falcon Arrow, but no, he wriggles out of it. German suplex, it's now Shane Haste and Volta. One on one right now. What in the world? Oh my god, what was that? A reverse snapmare into like a power slam. Whatever it was, it was beautiful and hectic at the same time. And Volta's just been busted open. The calf kick just caught Buster's, Buster's, it caught Buster's nose, it's busted Walter's nose. Shane Haste going up top. Oh, the black swan to Walter. One, two. He's beaten him. Shane Haste wins the fatal four way. What a match. A humongous win for Shane Haste. Possibly the biggest for Shane Haste of Universe Mode so far. Women's Division action and this past NWA USA we saw Liv Morgan pick up a big win in the Triple Threat match. And that's going to pay off because tonight she's getting an opportunity against Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair recently beat... Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley in a triple threat match. 
It's going to be Bel Air versus Ripley at NWA All Out War in the climax of their rivalry. But will Liv Morgan tonight become number one contender to challenge the winner of that match? Liv Morgan has had her ups and downs throughout Universe Mode. But again, she recently picked up a massive win against Tony Storm and Dewdrop on NXT USA. Uh, NXT USA? <laughs> NWA USA? It will actually be the second week that we have not seen Rhea Ripley since she lost that championship. She's uh, not been spotted in the locker room. She's not been around for dark matches or TV tapings or anything like that. No house show matches, nothing. She has not been seen since. Who knows what Rhea Ripley has in mind for Bianca Belair uh, come all at war. We don't know the stipulation of the matchup yet either. But this rivalry, it's been going on for a long time now. I think roughly four to five months at this point. So far in this match though, Belair being on top of Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan not managed to get much offense in so far, which is a shame. Look at this air raid crash position into the neck breaker. And don't speak too soon, Rhea Ripley's music is playing, but she's not up on the stage. Rhea Ripley's in the ring with a chair! Oh my god! Rhea Ripley smashing Bianca Belair over the head with a chair. And look at Liv Morgan looking to capitalize, but Bianca Belair with a kick out. What an equalizer on behalf of Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan with a roll up, with a roll up, but referee was disposing of the chair. And another quick kick out. Liv Morgan's going to have an opportunity here to get back into this thing. And based on Chris Jericho's win in the opening match of tonight's show, it's been confirmed by William Regal that tonight's main event will be a member of the JAS versus Will Ospreay. And uh, it's not going to be Angelo Parker or Matt Menard, that's for certain. It can't be Chris Jericho, he's already competed. That means Osprey versus Omos. It's going to be a very interesting main event. Liv Morgan, now with the assist from Ripley, has managed to get her way back into this match. Bel Air now, big splash off the top to Liv Morgan. Morgan really been struggling. This is going to be. A, uh, a massive loss for Morgan if she can't pick up the pinfall against Bel Air. Bel Air, I mean, she's champion. She's guaranteed that match against Ripley. Unless by some miracle she loses it. Well, miracle for Ripley. By some unfortunate turn of events, I suppose, if she loses that championship before the pay-per-view. But there's currently no situation that she can do that. Um, unless... Ripley manages to injure her. Roll up, roll up there. One and a quick kick out from Bel Air. Liv Morgan, though, got a lot to lose. She floundered when it came to the Crockett Cup against Charlotte Flair. She's managing to pick up more, more frequent wins. She has one of the better win loss ratios so far out of a lot of the women. Rolling out of that move and a roll up on Bel Air. But another quick kick out there. So this is going to be really do or die for Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan now 201 face buster. And look at her flaunting, flaunting the advantage over Bel Air that she currently has. Belair came out here with a full head of steam. She picked up the advantage right off the bat. And Rhea Ripley again managing to equal the odds for Liv Morgan. Because let's not be let's not be foolish. Bianca Belair 
way way better physical shape than Liv Morgan. She's got the height advantage, the strength advantage. Liv Morgan possibly has a speed uh, speed advantage. Yeah, speed advantage. But even that is up for debate. When it comes to Bel Air, she is a peak performer. She is the top of the chart when it comes to being athletic. Oh my god, and Liv Morgan got the knees up. Oh my god, and a play of the day. A play of the day out of nowhere from Liv Morgan. Kick to the midsection as Bel Air starts to recover. 201 face buster though. And Belair not staying down. The two women fighting for, for the control there. And Belair not letting Liv Morgan have it. Morgan's just hit two of her best moves in a row. Oh my god, I'm rolling out of it. Oh, went for the play of the day, but Belair caught her. Be I can't believe Belair took both of those moves and is still in this thing. Where is Morgan taking her? Went for the ropes. Oh my god, and Belair's fighting back and another play of the day. One, two. Oh my god, and Belair with the kick out. And now lifting up Morgan. Oh, oh my god. Taking a page out of Chris Jericho's playbook there. And dumping Morgan on the outside of the ring. Oh, good grief. What in the world has gotten into Bel Air? Bel Air, I don't know what she just said to a fan. Possibly a Liv Morgan supporter. Not anymore. Because uh, Bel Air is going to make sure that <laughs> Liv Morgan doesn't return for another opportunity, apparently. <laughs> my god. God, Morgan manages to counter whatever it is that uh, Belair was going for. KOD on the outside of the ring. Holy shit. And Belair could have probably gone for a count out there, but deciding not to. I don't know what she just said to Liv Morgan. Something about, uh, <laughs> go back to Rhea Ripley, probably. A second KOD to Morgan. And Belair going for the pin. One, two, and that is it. Belair, despite getting hit with two play of the days and a chair, Belair picks up the win. Sending a message to Rhea Ripley, that's for certain. Tag division time, even though this has been a belter of a show, we've still got two matches left. <laughs> um, but we've got FTR, the NWA National Tag Team Champions. And they're going to be answering essentially an open challenge of sorts. It's going to be more of an exhibition match to kind of get a bit of a feel for how tag teams perform against FTR. They're going to be taking on the club. The club made their debut alongside AJ Styles. This is going to be their tag debut. I'm not going to lie, I'm not quite certain whether or not they were former WWE Tag Champions in Universe Mode, but they have been around. So they're no strangers to Universe Mode at the very least. FTR just came out of that heated feud with the Usos where they, they actually won the, the blow-off match in that feud uh, at NWA Turn Up The Trouble. The Usos were briefly here, but no word so far on whether they're going to be permanently signed. We do have a lot of tag teams, especially with Volta and Imperium uh, making it known that they are back into the mix. But the club, we got 2.0, part of JAS, TMDK, American Alpha, or uh, Alpha Academy rather, and who knows who else, we've, we've heard Apollo Crews and Aziz talking about uh, wanting to enter the tag division, 
So who knows who else we could actually end up seeing. But so far, Carl Anderson with uh, Harwood in the ring right now. Anderson had control over Harwood. Anderson well known for being a singles competitor actually. Outside of the NWA and WWE divisions, mostly over in New Japan. He's been the holder of singles titles in the past. What is that? First Rhea Ripley and now that's Kyle Fletcher from Aussie Open, who Aussie Open actually had a match against FTR. FTR managed, managed to win that match. And Wheeler going after Kyle Fletcher, sending him packing. But Aussie Open may be staking their claim against the tag champs. And it's been no secret that uh, Aussie Open and United Empire want to become the holders of every championship. You know, you've got TJP in the Super Junior Division, currently feuding with Ilya Dragunov, trying to recruit Dragunov. You've got Aussie Open, who obviously want the tag championships. Who knows what could happen between Osprey and Jericho? Oh my god. Carl Anderson busted open Wheeler and has not stopped since. Referee almost having to disqualify the club. Oh my god, and a rocket kick to the face of Wheeler. The club have been incredibly dominant so far. Look at Wheeler's face. And Anderson choosing, choosing to stop the pin there. Snapmare, oh my god, and catching Wheeler. Taking him down with that kick to the midsection. But yeah, who knows if Blair Davenport could uh, capture, the, uh, yeah, capture the women's championship. Or if someone like Jeff Cobb could pick up the national championship at some stage in the future. They may have a chance. Went for the gun stun. But Wheeler with the reversal. Oh, and a snap DDT flattens him down. Anderson not giving Wheeler the opportunity to get back into this thing. Look at those brutal stomps to the open wound of Wheeler. Anderson in the corner. Looking for the blockbuster. Standing blockbuster, but Wheeler with the back body drop. Harwood not on the outside. Roll up into the prawn. One. Two. But no. Anderson with a kick out. Only just managed to get the two. Where in the world is Harwood? Because Wheeler needs him. FTR really having to up their game now with uh, these new tag teams. And now lifting Anderson to his feet. Trying to get him to the corner. Into the corner with Harwood and tag me to Harwood. Could be looking for the big rig. And they hit it and Harwood uses his knee brace. Holy shit. And Gallows breaks up the pinfall there. Wheeler decided to go to the outside. He probably could have stayed in the ring but decided against it. Oh, and a fake out DDT there from Harwood. Oh, and a spear. A spear from Harwood to Gallows on the outside. Kick to the midsection. There's a pile driver to Anderson. One. Two. And FTR with a win over the club. But that was a close call there for FTR. A little bit of a disagreement between the two tag champions, but they got there in the end and they looked pretty happy with themselves. Look at Wheeler's face. Main event time, and as mentioned earlier, it's going to be Omos, accompanied by the JAS. And Omos is going to be taking on the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Will Ospreay. Tonight's been a hell of a show. <laughs> Fantastic matches from start to finish so far. 
hopefully this one can follow in that, uh, in that, uh, what, let's just hope it can follow. <laughs> Almost is essentially Jericho's newly hired henchman after, I guess, buying Omos out from Austin Theory. United Empire with a uh, bit of a mistake of an entrance motion there on my part. I apologize. For some reason, they're not coming out in the order that they should be, but it's fine. Osprey and his other half, Blair Davenport, being flanked in the back there by Jeff Cobb. So, NWA All Out War, that championship's going to be on the line against Chris Jericho. We're going to see Osprey versus Jericho for the first time ever. That's going to be one hell of a match. And Osprey trying uh, the more vertical offense, vertical based offense against Omos. And that's what he gets for that. Oh my god. That right hook completely rocking Osprey. And Jericho's made no attempt to uh, hide the fact that this is essentially just going to be almost trying to soften down Osprey for the pay-per-view match. And granted, that match is still a few weeks away, but you can do a lot of damage in a few weeks. Diving kick off the top takes down Omos. Osprey managing to ground the giant. And speaking about grounded, he's trying to keep him down with that Cobra clutch on on Omos. We don't really see Osprey go for too many submission holds. And it's one thing to go for a submission hold, it's another to go for one against someone much bigger than yourself. We saw newest member of United Empire, Logan Paul, go up against Volta recently. <laughs> Safe to say we've not seen Logan Paul since, definitely recovering from that one, but... William Regal has apparently got some plans for Logan Paul in terms of booking. And giving him opportunities. There's a, a headbutt there by Omos, and standing on top of the champion, that's what he thinks of Will Ospreay in the NWA Championship. Can you imagine Omos with that championship? The rampage that that man could go on. <clears throat> and Osprey again, again going for the Cobra Clutch again this time. Closer to the ropes, closer to the JAS so that he can yell profanities at them. And uh, Jericho and Osprey are quite dastardly in their uh, own personal ways. United Empire has been running rampant and JAS have been uh, verbally rampant since they arrived. But it's really, this, this fight at the, at the All Out War pay-per-view is going to be sort of who is going to be the lesser evil out of the two. Will the fans rally behind Will Osprey because he isn't necessarily as deviant as Chris Jericho, not naturally, he's more of an arrogant son of a bitch than he is a uh, just a pure evil son of a bitch. Will they rally behind Will Ospreay and his athleticism? Who knows? Or will they go for Chris Jericho? Will they say that they're tired of Will Ospreay's reign and side with Jericho? <clears throat> it's going to be a very interesting pay-per-view match. Oh my god, and a hidden blade to Omos. Will Osprey going for the grounded hidden blade there. And Omos with the kick out. A very quick kick out at that as well. Now's probably a good time to update everybody as well on the condition of Austin Fury. We do have a response. Uh, I was going to say professionally. <laughs> Uh, we do have an official response from William Regal regarding Austin Fury. He's heard back from the trainers and medical staff after the, the multiple assessments over this past week. And it's been confirmed that Austin Fury will be out of action for the bare minimum a few weeks. 
which is devastating for Fury. He does have like a rematch clause against Chris Jericho. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Regal decides, you know, we should get a number one contender and make Chris Jericho pull double duty. Or whether Chris Jericho will just simply not get to defend that championship on the pay-per-view. Oh, and a big boot from Omos to Will Ospreay. Bloody hell, almost took off Ospreay's forehead. And the jabs to the midsection to Ospreay now. Omos trying to keep the offense. He doesn't want to let Ospreay get too much into this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, seven foot slam. And Osprey goes down, almost follows. And Osprey, I don't know if he got the uh, the shoulder up or what. It looked like almost wasn't done. He wanted to inflict more punishment again. This is about softening him up. Osprey just caught almost with a super kick. We've seen people pull out of pinfalls before and heavily regret it. Could this be the same situation now for Omos? He could be sacrificing a win against the champion for helping out Chris Jericho. And a hidden blade from Osprey while Omos is grounded. One, two, and Omos with the kick out. Osprey again going for the Cobra Clutch, center of the ring. Trying to make Omos tap. And he does! Omos just tapped out to Osprey. That Cobra Clutch, the grounded clutch from the champion. He was wrenching at the, the open wound on Omos. Omos, don't know if he succeeded in uh, softening up the champion, but message sent to Jericho.